Hey, it's time for another episode of the Polish Dragon PI Show. I'm your host, Steve Zimkowski, and I'm here to share with you old radio shows from the 1930s, 40s, 50s, pertaining primarily to the private detective genre. You'll hear such shows as The Adventures of Sam Spade, The New Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, Johnny Dollar, and this week we're going to go with Candy Matson, The Private Eye from San Francisco. So sit back and relax because I'm about to take you on a journey back in time to when radio was the only form of home entertainment. So get your popcorn, get your drinks together because the show's about to start when you sit back and relax and listen to Candy Matson in the Donna Dunham case. Hello, Candy Matson. I understand you've been hired to find out who knocked off Donna Dunham. Abrupt and right to the point. That's my business, old man who talks like a ghost. Take care of your health, little lady. Donna Dunham is dead. Let her stay like that. You take care of your cues and I'll show my peas, understood? Not quite. Listen to this. <coughs> oh, goody, goody. Bullets now delivered by phone. Thanks for the slug. I'll have it identified later. Maybe you'll be identified later. Remember what I said, Candy Manson. Forget about Donna Donna. <coughs> became a private eye. And, too, you meet such interesting people. Mostly dead. But getting back to the cash angle, that's why I took on the Donna Dunham case. I knew it was full of dynamite. But a girl has to eat now and then, maintain a penthouse on Telegraph Hill, and keep the moths out of a few mink coats, doesn't she? Sure. And a shot fired into your room from across the street at three in the morning is just one of those occupational hazards. So I took the job and the 500 and went to work. Like to hear how the whole thing started? Well, leave us proceed to act one. I'd had a hard day at the office, sleeping all day. And I needed a bit of a tonic to pick me up. So the natural thing to do was to ground loop into the marigold room and see what could be done. As I sank down onto one of the padded stools, the dispenser approached. Uh, make it a martini, my good man. Very dry. So dry it comes out like a blotter. Well, look, lady, nothing would give me more pleasure, but I can't serve you here unless you have an escort. What? Oh, I, I'm, I'm waiting for someone. That's what they all say. But he'll be here very soon. I know, I know. It never fails. Why, you low-minded crock. For two cents, I I'd see, not... I have... arrived just in time. Save your two cents, my dear. Huh? You heard what the lady said? A martini. Uh, make it two. Uh, uh yeah. Uh, sure. I, I thought it was just another one of those... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, two martinis. Well, saved from a fate worse than death, Miss Madsen. Who are you? A natural question. And I'd like a natural answer. Roberts is my name. Warren Roberts. Oh. I own a few steamships hither and yon about the world. Oh, yes, I know. I took a trip on one of your scows once. The food was a nightmare's nightmare. How do you think I came to be a millionaire? Ah, uh -huh. I see your point. How did you know my name and what do you want? I have a business proposition to make to you, Miss Matson. You're sure it's business, Mr. Roberts? Strictly business, Miss Manson. Call me Candy. You tell me the details and I'll tell you what it'll cost you. Fair enough. But don't think. You can always make it back on your food. Well, I can hardly tell you here. Uh, suppose we drop over to my place. But I want that martini. My man will make us a batch over there. The things I do to make a living... Okay, let's go. Hey, uh, how about these drinks? Uh, here you are, my man, and save the martinis for some poor wayward soul who hasn't the wherewithal to make the purchase. Oh, good evening, Mr. Roberts. I, I didn't know you were expecting company. Uh, so soon after... Take Miss Matson's things, Montgomery, and bring us a martini. 
means that they're all made, sir. Good. Let's go into the drawing room, shall we? Mm -hmm. Modest little mouse trap, isn't it? And I'll bet it's had a good path beaten to its door, too. <laughs> Quite a sense of humor you have, Candy. <laughs> well, it helps now and then. Here, sit down here. That's it. I, uh... I can't quite see you. It's like being behind a retaining wall. Oh, well, I'll just listen. What's the topic of conversation? A young lady named Donna Dunham. Aha, uh -huh, the female element. What is your connection? Much strictly that of a patron. Oh. Miss Dunham was a hat check girl over at the Scarlet Dawn. I heard her sing one night. I decided right then and there that I was going to sponsor her career. Was? Yes. Donna Dunham was murdered early this morning. By you? What? Are you out of your head? Yes, when I think of the fee I'm going to get from you. I uh, beg your pardon, sir. The martinis. What? Oh, oh, yes. Uh, put them down there, Montgomery. Here, yes. Very good, Montgomery. I won't need anything else tonight. Thank you, sir. Good night, miss. Uh, good night. Uh, don't sleep too tight. May I? Mm, you certainly may. I've been waiting far too long for one of these. There you are. Well, as a sponsor, you didn't pick a protege with great lasting qualities, did you? No, I didn't. She was so young, so very lovely. Will you take the case, Miss Matson? What do I have to go on? Oh, very little. My suspicions point to a musician who worked at the Scarlet Dawn. He seemed to resent very strongly my stepping into the picture. Were they going to get it? Off and on, until I started to back Donna's career. A very interesting triangle. What do the police have to say? The police, Miss Matson, have not yet been notified. What? I went over there this morning and I discovered the body lying on the floor. I became confused. I, I locked the door and called the Scarlet Dawn. I told the manager that Miss Dunham was quite ill and wouldn't be able to appear tonight. Extremely ill, I'd say. Oh. This is fine. You realize you're in trouble, don't you? Yes, I do. And that if I take this case, I'm sticking my neck out, too? Exactly. My uh, fee is 500 That's a fair price. In advance. Well, I'll make out a check immediately. Oh. Won't you have another martini? I, uh, I don't think so. You know, you are very beautiful. Uh, thank you. But I already have a sponsor. And your lips are very, very kissable. The best you can buy from Max Factors. Are you sure you don't want another martini? Look, Roberts, let's get this straight. You're in the middle of a jackpot. Make that check out right now so I can join you. Then it's up to me to spring the both of us. In the meantime, get that glint out of your eye. The one that's wired for wolf calls. Understood? Very well. I'll get started right away. Where does the late Miss Dunham live? Just on the edge of Chinatown. 27B Gresham Alley. It's the only three-flat house on the block. I'll find it. And you, you just stick right here and don't poke your face out of the door. Now, the uh, check, if you will. Somebody had to. The score was still tied in the 27th inning. Stop gagging, Candy. 
What are you doing around here? You don't like tomato chow yuck that much. Well, maybe that oriental music sends me. By the way, where's the scarlet door, Nelly? Huh? Uh, all right down there on the corner. Come on. I'll buy you a double Mickey. Uh, no, thanks. I just had one. And listen, Caddy, make a tip. Don't interfere with the work of the police. Don't worry about me, Nelly. And you take a tip, too. Next time you trail somebody, get yourself a pair of tennis shoes. Yes, miss. Would you like a table? No, thanks. Uh, no. Something I can do? Hmm? Oh. Oh, yes, I'm... I'm a friend of Donna Dunham. She wanted me to come over and tell you that she's feeling better. She'll be back at work tomorrow night. Well, that's good. A business at the hot check stand, no good without her. Yeah. Yes, yes she's a great girl. By the way, I, I, I don't see her boyfriend tonight. Boyfriend? You know, the, the fellow who plays in the band. Oh, Donnie Andrini. No, he got night off. Oh, too bad. She wanted me to tell him, too. Yeah, too bad. Oh, maybe you'll find him at the Lotus Hotel. He lived there. Oh, sure. The Lotus. Yes, I'll check there, and thank you very much. Rembrandt Watson speaking. Yes, I know. Now, look. Photographs taken at reasonable prices. I know, Rembrandt. Family I... groups and portraits especially also... At... Rembrandt, this is I, Candy Madsen. Fine colored pictures of... What? Candy Matson? That's right. By all the furies of Zeus. Why did you have to call just now? I was wooing the muse that only Bacchus can create, probing the infinitesimal heights a soul can reach from the tear of the grave. And you have to call and spoil it all. Look, Rembrandt, uncross your eyes and listen to me. I shall listen, my lily, but undoubtedly I won't like it. What skullduggery are you up to now? I'm knee-deep in something that smells as high as the Oakland mud flats. A towering comparison. What is it? I can't tell you now, but I want you to do me a favor. Get your finest camera and go over to 27B Gresham Alley. Get inside and take all the pictures you can of the place. Won't I be intruding? No. There's a very attractive young lady there. Oh, how delightful. She's dead. How dull. I dislike intensely one-sided conversations. All right. What do I do then? Go back to your place and get me some prints as fast as you can. I go, but not willingly. Only for you would I forsake the mood I have achieved through prodigious application. Bully for you, laddie buck. I'll see you at your place in about an hour. Are you the night clerk? I am sitting bull. Yes, we have no rooms. Uh, I'm not here for a room. Oh. Well, uh, maybe there's something I can do for you. Yes. Uh, could you tell me if Mr. Danny Andrini is in? No, he isn't. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen him all day. Uh, y yes, I know. There there's a reason. We had to take him to the hospital this morning. What? Yes. He's... Uh, He's uh, under observation for appendicitis. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So, I was wondering if you'd let me have his key. Huh? He wants me to bring in his portable radio. Well, does he have one? I heard. Did you ever know a musician who didn't own a portable radio? <laughs> well, I know, come to think of it. Yeah, yeah, here's the key. It's uh, room 418. Thank you. You're very kind. Uh, not at all. Not at all. Start making like a private eye. Letters. Letters. Yes, over here. Promising. A whole pile up. Well, let's try this one. Dear Danny, I don't know how to start this, but 
Your accusations last night need some sort of answering. I'm not in love with Warren Roberts and never will be. He's just proven to be a very kind and gracious friend. You must realize that I have placed my singing career above everything else, and I've been one of taken 
pictures of a flat similar to this, only it's been remodeled. This is, well, this is perfect for the contract. Mm. Uh, I guess it's all right. Go ahead. Uh, start with the hall, Rembrandt. Roger, my pretty. Let's see, this should be just about right. Mm-hmm. Now, the, uh, the bedroom. That should be off the hall here. Oh, yes. Uh, shoot from the door, Rembrandt. Did you get the entire room? Mm, not quite, but most of it. That'll do. Just a moment. Uh, there we are. You cats work fast. Uh, what was that? I said you work fast. Uh, yes. Now, in the bathroom, do you have a tub or a shower? Why, well, uh, why don't you see for yourself? No. On second thought, I, I think that's about all we need. Candy, you said that we... Come could... along, Rembrandt, and uh, thank you very much. Oh, uh, that's Rembrandt. okay, and don't slam the door. The lady downstairs is sound asleep. I've got this thing licked. Are you referring to this case or my desire to return to the arms of Bacchus? That I could never lick. I'm talking about the case. But I need help, Rembrandt. I am here. No. That's not enough. I need the big, strong arm of the law. Oh, no. Candy, you traitor. I hate to admit it, but I need somebody like Mallard. My being crazy? Hmm? Oh, no. It's the wicked genie. Yikes, it's the dumb shoe. Yeah, in person. Mallard, how did you get here? I took your advice and bought some tennis shoes. <laughs> All right, Spill, what goes on? Been following you around till I'm punchy. Start talking, Candy. Okay, so you heard me. I do need your help, Mallard. Badly. There was a young girl murdered yesterday at 27B Gresham Alley. Is that the place you just came from? That's right. Why don't we ever hear of these things? Oh, I get exclusive rights. Anyway, I think I have the whole deal figured out. You can have full credit, Mallard, but you've got to take my advice. It hurts, but go ahead. Now go back to 27C, Gresham Alley. That's the top flat. Mm -hmm. You'll find a character there named Danny Andrini. Uh, take it. Then get out to 5711 Pacific Street as fast as you can. Uh, all right, I'll do it. But, Candy, so help me, if this is a foul-up on you, the new look with stripes is going to be very fashionable. She knows what she's doing, Mallard. When you get back to Gresham Alley, just tell Mr. Andrini that you're from House Lovely. He'll adore you. <laughs> Here on Pacific, Candy. It's out of our league. All of a sudden, I've become socially conscious. Come on, Montgomery, answer the door. Ah, oh, right on cue. I beg your pardon. Did you ring? And no, Montgomery. We, we crossed the moat and used a battering ram. I'm sorry, young lady. Mr. Roberts doesn't wish to be disturbed. Look, Montgomery, remember me? I was here earlier this evening. Mr. Roberts and I had a martini together. Martinis? Well, it was worth a safari out here after all. Uh-uh. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, miss. I didn't recognize you at first. Uh, yes, do come in, won't you? The light dawned. If you'll just wait in the drawing room, miss, I'll inform Mr. Roberts of your friend. Thank you very much, Montgomery. I used to know a chap like that in the British Army. By continual groveling and studied abjectedness, he worked his way up to the rank of a private. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. First laugh I've had tonight. What's the pitch, Candy? I don't get it. You will in a minute. You hear the patter of little feet. Miss Madsen, what's the idea? I thought you were going to check with me by phone. Mr. Roberts, this thing is bigger than either of us. I just couldn't wait. <coughs> uh, is there a martini in the house? I'll have Montgomery serve in just a moment. I don't think there will be time, Mr. Roberts. Well, where is she? You really loved her, didn't you? Madly. That just about describes it. Madly. 
The value was a, shall we say, sponsoring her career. You thought she was playing around with Danny and Zini as well. Yes, she was. You're wrong, Robert. I have a letter from Donna Dunham to Danny and Zini. In effect, she told him to blow, skedaddle, vamoose. What? That's right. So it seems we have a slight piece of mistaken murder on our hands, doesn't it? Yes. On one hand. On the other, I have two in mind that will be deliberate. You asked for it, Miss Matson. Too bad you had to bring your friend along. I wouldn't if I were you, Robert. A blighter has a pistol. I thought you said he served martinis. This isn't exactly a social moment. I know how you privatize work, your lone wolves. You confide in no one. So with a pull of the finger, I erase all evidence. Just like this. <laughs> He's dead. Well, I'm really grateful to you, but where on earth did you come from? Like I say, Candy, you just can't beat these tennis shoes. Well, that fills everything up except for one thing. Where do we go now for the martinis? <laughs> I'm into the darndest messes you ever heard of. Sure, Roberts killed her. He was jealous. And I knew I was on the right track when Rembrandt said the apartment above Donna Dunham smelled like the Far East. It was tobacco odor, the same Turkish aroma I had smelled in Roberts' home out on Pacific Street. Danny Andrini? Well, he was waiting for Roberts to return. He was going to kill him. He knew that Roberts had rented the flat above Dunham for uh, sponsoring purposes. Donna was a nice kid. She was just caught in the middle. Flat. And that ends another episode of the Post Dragon PI Show. You have been listening to Candy Matson in the Donna Dunham case. So make sure that if you enjoy the show, click like down below, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.